All right there, hello. Welcome to the first episode of Meeple Meals. And uh, today we're going to be uh, having a meal with Euphoria as the game. Euphoria, Builder Better Dystopia. All right, it's a great game. Uh, if you get a chance, go pick it up. I'm going to briefly tell you a little bit about it here. Um, most of the game, you're trying to keep your workers dumb. All right, so you're going around, you're going to create resources. It's a little bit of like a worker placement. Um, it's, a, it's a cool game. You can play up to six players and um, it takes a little while but very good. This is a deluxe edition. There's a lot of good pieces in here like the bricks actually look like bricks and little gold bricks and they're met, made out of metal and everything. So um, I'm not going to get too much into the game but it's, it, it's a very good game so go pick it up. But back to the meals. And today we're going to do a meeples meal for you and uh, we're going to try to match up a game with some food. And what we did here is Euphoria, foods with Euphoria, you know. Uh, what do you think of when you think of Euphoric food? Uh, maybe chocolate, maybe a decadent cut of steak, or a steak wrapped in bacon or something. Um, so that's what we did. We, there's a, we have a uh, dessert, we have a, uh, an after dinner drink, let's say. We have an entree, uh, a starch and a veg for you. And uh, I'm going to briefly go through that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a chef uh, by trade here and I enjoy doing this so I thought it'd be pretty cool to try to match up some food with a couple of games here and see how far we can take this. So if you like them I'll try to get the recipes up there as soon as possible and uh, you know email me or the, at the Jag Off site there and feel free to ask some questions. Alright and uh, I'll show you how to make a little bit of food. Sam Green here for Jagoff's Resident Chef um, and what we're going to do in our inaugural uh, Meeple's Meals uh, taping here is we're going to do, we're, we're, like we discussed uh, over at the table there, we are going to do something very decadent, very, um, I want to say euphoric if we can. I asked for a few suggestions from some friends here and uh, the things that came out were pretty good. So we're going to do them, they're all very simple, anybody can prepare these, you'll be able to find the recipes on the website there shortly after this is posted so uh, keep an eye out for it hope you enjoy it and everything here is uh, yes I, I do this for a living but anybody can do this as you as you'll be able to see here so what we're going to do first here is make some cake uh, it's a very decadent cake there's chocolate involved there's chocolate coffee there's um, what else uh, cocoa all kind of good stuff so sugar so we're going to start off real fast here and uh, flour Two and a half cups of flour, and then we need one and a half cups of sugar. And again, you can measure this stuff out exact, and then one half cup of cocoa. This is all done fairly cheaply to this inexpensive cake. You can dress this up as much as you want. Do all your dries first. Again, the recipe will be up on the site. So, so that you two teaspoons of baking soda. Try not to use the stuff that's been in the fridge for six months. Trying to deodorize it, that'll go into your cake. So if you can keep a fresh box. Uh, we got a half teaspoon of salt. I'm just using some fresh sea salt. A couple of grinds for a half teaspoon. All right. Two thirds cup of oil. You want the, your liquid. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And uh, don't be too picky about buying brands. You can get your store brand of stuff, get your store brand of stuff. One tablespoon of vanilla. I barely have any left, so it's getting all the vanilla I got. Two cups of cold coffee. I brewed this a little earlier out of Keurig. This is some Mocha Kahlua coffee with a dash of some Hershey syrup in it for an extra little bit of flavor. So, two cups of cold coffee. 
I had the fork in it to start well within the fridge. And then some cinnamon. Where's my cinnamon here? Got a half teaspoon. Give this a good stir. And it's called a one pancake. You can literally do it right in the pan. I like doing it in a mixing bowl though. So it's all incorporated there. Try to get some lumps out. You can avoid some of that. You can mix your dry ahead of time, your liquids, and then add them in. Dump it in an ungreased pan. I'm using a round. A 10 inch round spring form pan. The recipe calls for, I think it was a, a 12 by 8 foil pan, but uh, I don't like cooking in foil. You get that aluminum taste sometimes. Glass pans are really good for baking cakes, but I want the spring form for, you'll see with the end product on why. Alright, in the pan, ungreased. Uh, 350 for, let me see what we're looking at, 35 to 40 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean. So my oven's already preheated. I like baking on a pizza stone. That way you have a nice even uh, cooking service there. In case your oven might be a little off, just leave the pizza stone here all the time. Set the pan right on top. And then go have a few more bourbons for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, come back, check it. Don't open your oven. Leave your oven closed this whole time for at least the 30 minutes or so, then check it. It's not going to get done before that 30 minutes. You want a toothpick, come out clean. So we'll see you in a little bit.
here we go with our next dish for our uh, meal today, our meeple's meal for Euphoria. Uh, we're going to do some uh, pe peppered bacon wrapped stuffed top, uh, top round steaks. Um, it's a relatively cheaper steak. Uh, just get it. What I've done so far is I've pounded it out uh, with a nice meat mallet there. Uh, make sure you get both sides. And then now, um, uh, the only seasoning I'm using is this spicy garlic stuff here. Uh, picked up at some discount store somewhere. Uh, don't be afraid to buy that kind of stuff. And then we're going to put some blue cheese inside. We don't need a whole lot, but you want enough to be able to taste it. Make sure it's crumbled up, you don't want any too big of chunks. And I only want to do like the top uh, three quarters of the, of the steak so it gives you some room to roll. Um, you always get by the crumbles. You could probably cheat and buy a, a sliced blue cheese if you want or get a chunk of it and slice it down. I like working with the crumbles better. Alright, that and I'm going to put a little bit of chopped green onions. You can also use chives or whatever onion floats your boat. I like using green onions, I'm not too, too picky, but and then take it, take your bottom part there, and roll it up nice and tight if you can. Alright. Now you got two nice rolls, nice and even. I bought the bacon pepper, you could always buy some nice slick thick sliced bacon. Um, this is lightly peppered on it. You can lay it down. I think I'm going to put about three strips on each steak so you can lay them out. You can do opposite ends so they sort of match up. Give you a nice even. And then roll them up. You want to leave the end, uh, the, the the end of the bacon on the bottom there. So there you go, you got that. There's one. So there you have it. Four blue cheese and pepper bacon stuffed steaks. All right, and I'll show you how to cook them here in a in a few in another minute here. All right, here we go. We got our steaks here. I had some extra bacon, so I put some across the top there. If I would have known, I uh, could have counted, but I would have liked to have had it underneath. But either way, we got some extra bacon, more bacon the better. Uh, I was going to do this in a cast iron skillet, but obviously it's a little, little big. So I got out the non-stick roasting pan, and we're going to brown them off in here a little bit, and then we're going to fire them in the oven to finish them off. So use some non-stick, use, uh, use the appropriate tools there. So. Place them upside down first, get a little bit of little bit of color on it. them over now. Like I said, just a little bit of color on them. I don't want to handle them too, too much. And then I have some other piece of meat I'm going to use too. Same thing. Get the same thing with it. If you're wondering where that came from. I've got my oven set for about 325. Uh, I think they're good to go. I want to get them in the oven. Check for a temperature. Uh, some of you guys like your uh, steak a little a little less than that. I'm going to shoot for about a uh, about 150 or so, which is about a medium roughly. And check those in a little bit. 
Um, you don't want them to dry out too much. Maybe add a little bit of water later. Heck, you can add a little bit of wine if you want. If you're a beer person, you can dump a little bit of Guinness in there, add some flavor, let that reduce down over them. You can do all kind of stuff. Don't be afraid to you know, try it out. So, but we're just going to let them cook. I might add a little bit of water a little bit later. So, all right, all right. When done. We got our Yukon Golds here. Uh, this is going to be one of our side dishes. And the reason I got some Yukon Gold is the gold that goes with the game. There's gold in the game, so Yukon Gold. And with that in there, I got some garlic and herb butter. I just sort of whipped up some butter, a um, little bit of minced garlic, and just some dried herbs that I had up in my collection here. Uh, then I'm also going to put in, to jazz it up a little bit here, a little truffle sea salt. This stuff is very potent. Be very careful with this stuff. Uh, but a little pinch goes a long way. So uh, I'm surprised you can't smell this since I opened it. Uh, but just a little pinch in there. Uh, literally like maybe about a half a teaspoon in, the, in five pounds of Yukon Gold. And we're going to mix those up here. There's milk in there, a little butter. So that's what that is. For our other side dish, for our vegetable, we have uh, quartered mushrooms, just some standard issue mushrooms, quartered them, butter, a little salt and pepper, olive oil, just uh, to add a little flavor there, and we're just going to saute them off, and you'll see how this all comes together. But again, very simple. Um, I'm also going to put in some dried shallots in with the mushrooms for some extra flavor, extra layer of flavor. All right, well, we'll see you again on the next segment. All right, all right here, now we got our drink for the game here. Our drink is going to be with Bluegrass Sundown. Um, it's only available, um, probably I had to get this when I was in Kentucky. So down in bourbon country. So while you're down there, you know, make sure you pick up yourself a bottle of this stuff because I think you're really going to like what we're going to make here. Uh, I'm sure it's maybe in some neighboring states you may be able to get it. But anyway, Bluegrass Sundown. Uh, equal parts, let's say one part Bluegrass Sundown, two parts boiling water. Alright, I'll give that a good good stir. Yeah, the recipe on the bottle calls for regular cream. What I did was took a little heavy whipping the uh, instead of just a plain whipping cream, a little heavy whipping cream, and put a little chocolate syrup in there so we get a little chocolate flavor. But you're gonna take the spoon and float it on top. So just touch the spoon to the surface, pour your whipping cream on top, and do that to all of them. Very good drink. It's warm. This will have a little chocolate flavor to it. Even with the regular plain cream, it's very good. I'm using my uh, Maker's Mark glasses. I'm a Maker's Mark ambassador, so I like my glasses. So that's our drink. Bluegrass Sundown, a little bit of chocolate. Here's to you. Enjoy the game.